Hey guys, so I am now 40 hours into Hogwarts Legacy and I have found a lot of tips and tricks that I think will help out a lot of you beginner players and honestly a lot of things that I wish I knew when I very first started this game. So we're going to go ahead and go over a lot of different tips and tricks that might help you guys out when you're getting started. If you guys do like this video, go ahead and leave a like down below and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. If not, it's all good. We love y'all anyway. Guys, first thing I want to show you guys is the best settings that I have found for combat within this game first thing you want to do is you want to go into your settings and go into this little cogwheel right here with a controller in front of it you want to turn camera relative targeting off this will allow you to target enemies that are off of your screen as opposed to having to aim your camera at an enemy in order to actually use your magic on them in the first place so this will help you fine tune your combat and control the battlefield a lot easier next thing you want to do is you want to come down here to camera acceleration and turn off camera acceleration and aiming acceleration this will allow you to get more of a precise pinpoint camera angle along with being able to aim your wand and just aim your camera in general and it also helps for flying for what i've noticed next you want to come up here to your camera sensitivity and go ahead and turn that up just a little bit more because now you will have more control of your camera and everything will feel a lot more fluid so go ahead and try these settings out and see if you like it next thing i want to show you guys is this arithmacy door right here when i very first started it was absolutely incredible confusing the thing is you want to come up to these doors and it will reveal a math equation if you see down here these symbols are numbered from zero to nine so it starts here with this with this little i don't know what this is but zero one two three four five six seven eight nine and the thing is you do want to solve for the symbols when you see a question mark that is going to be where you're going to put the corresponding symbol depending on what this solution is so it is going to be addition so first things first 15 plus whatever the symbol is plus the question mark is going to equal 23. so if the symbol is 0 1 2 as you can see those symbols match 15 plus 2 equals 17 17 plus 6 equals 23 so the solution is going to be six, but you are going to need a symbol. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. You're going to get this little lizard dragon looking thing. Now you want to go to the question mark and you want to turn it to that symbol of the answer that you actually got. So we have the lizard right here. Now, as you can see, you do want to use Revelio to try to find where these are because sometimes they could be separated. Now you're gonna solve for the double question mark right here. So you have that symbol right there, which is nine, cause it's all the way at the end. And then you have the Hydra symbol, add those two together, plus the question mark to equal 19. So we need to find what the Hydra is, zero, one, two, three. So you have nine plus three, which is 12. And then you have 12 plus seven, which will equal 19. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then you want to find that symbol go to the second double question mark you want to put that symbol in and go back to the door and it should open now next up guys we do want to talk about these disillusionment chests now you will see a lot of these around hogwarts when you are very first getting started now they won't be able to be open until you do get your disillusionment spell this spell allows you to go invisible for an indefinite amount of time this invisibility will allow you to walk up to the chest without the eye seeing you and be able to actually open it yourself now this comes in handy especially early on when you do need money because these chests do drop 500 gold each so you will find these not only in hogwarts but you will also find them throughout hogsmeade next thing i want to talk to you guys about real quick because i know you will have a lot of questions about this when you very first get started you will come up to a lot of doors that have this little lock on it right here now if you are wondering how you open these well you're in luck because you will eventually be able to open these locks when you complete a main quest line where you do get the alohomora spell now this spell will allow you to unlock any door the catch is you will be required to get these little statues that are called demiguys now these little demiguys 
Omega statues are scattered throughout the world. And in order to actually level up your Alohomora, because it does start at level one, you will have to bring the gentleman statues and he will require you to bring a certain amount of statues to him. Once you bring the certain amount, your lock level will be upgraded. So I highly suggest that you guys do as best as you can and try to get as many demigod statues to this gentleman as possible. This way you'll be able to unlock these doors at an earlier level and actually be able to get the crazy really good gear that's within these doors. Since we are talking about these demigod statues, I do want to talk about the next big thing and that is how to use your map. Now a lot of you may or may not know but I spent a lot of time going around just like this with my cursor and actually physically selecting the Hogwarts world map or Hogme. The thing about that is uh, what I learned is that you can actually use the left d-pad for this selection or the right d-pad for this selection instead of using your actual thumbstick. So if I wanted to go to Hogwarts, I'd simply push on the left D-pad and it'll take me there automatically. This has saved a lot of time and I think it will help you guys in the long run to do a little quick check of the map. Now, the reason I brought up this map is because if you see on the right hand side, there will be a little legend that shows you the area that you are currently selected and the different kind of collectible items slash field guide pages that you can actually complete these little events that you can complete here within this area will give you different challenges unlocked and it will give you a lot of different benefits so if you're looking for specific things such as the demigod statue you can see on the right hand side that i do have five out of ten in hogwarts so it is a very handy guide that'll show you just how many demigod statues are in this specific area for example if you go to the world map and you find yourself a nice little town and you hover over it you will get a little pop-up down at the bottom where it shows you exactly how many statue field guys or collection chests are within that area so if you are trying to level up your alohomora spell i highly suggest that you check this map out and figure out the quick and easy ones to get which are the demigod statues that are within the different little towns around the world another thing i want to point out about this map you are able to actually wait for it to become nighttime now i bring that up as well because those demigod statues are only able to be retrieved at nighttime so all you have to do is at the bottom right right here where it says click r3 down to wait you go ahead and you use that wait ability and it will take you from daytime to nighttime you will often see that a lot of quests are required for you to complete them at night and those demi guys statues do require you to complete them at night as well another thing that i want to show you guys about the map that is incredibly important if you do go to the world map and you use the zoom out feature that you see on the bottom if you zoom all the way out this will be the only way that you can actually see the levels that the enemies will be in that section understand that the enemies do scale to your actual level as long as you are within that range for example if you are a level 10 and you go into this area you will see that all the enemies are level 10 however if you are a level 7 and you travel into the north ford bog you will note that the lowest enemy that you will find is a level 10 Same same thing if you're a higher level than that area if you are a level 35 and you go into this area the highest level that will be in this area is the 25 so that range is specific and it does hard lock for those enemies but they do scale if you are within that range and the same thing goes for every single section of the map now this is very helpful if you do want to check out an entire region to see if there's balloons demi guys statues astronomy tables etc this map is very 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 versatile and it's absolutely incredibly helpful and honestly one of the best maps i've ever seen in an rpg all right now another thing that i do want to stress to you guys is i want you to make sure that you are being prepared especially at the lower levels for the actual missions that you are going to be going into now it is so easy to acquire a ton of gear so go ahead and equip your best gear go to the nearest shop and you wanna sell off all of those items as fast as possible. When you're going to sell, you wanna make sure that you don't sell the items that are better. So the thing to note when you are selling items, it will never ever show you the items that you are currently wearing. It will simply show the ones that are in your inventory. So if you have ones that are better just like this, but you just can't wear them yet, try not to sell those. If you see green, general rule of thumb, you wanna keep it. If you see red, such as this one right here, a negative offense, you wanna go ahead and sell those. And that goes for every single thing. 
you want to clear up as much inventory space as humanly possible before you go on this mission. The last thing I want to stress to you guys as newer players when it comes to Hogwarts Legacy is I want to stress the fact that you guys need to invest in blueprints as soon as possible. I do want to suggest that you invest in the material refiner, which gives you 10 moonstone every 10 minutes within the game. And this will go towards you being able to conjure up items inside your room of requirement, whether you want decorations or whether you want anything, because everything you conjure does cost moonstone. Now you'll find moonstone out in the world that you can go and destroy in order to up the amount that you have and are able to use however if you invest in these they pay themselves back within like 30 minutes so it's absolutely imperative that you go ahead and you place three of these down which is the maximum so go ahead and get those next guys when it comes to the plants i do want to highly suggest that you invest in the larger tables yes they will be more expensive however it's important to note that you are able to plant smaller plants within the large potted tables themselves now if you do want to add more plants guys you can purchase the potting table that gives you three medium pots you do want to stay away from getting the small potted tables as much as possible if you are finding that you need more of the medium pots, I would highly suggest that you get the three stack medium pot instead. Now this dung composter right here, guys, will give you fertilizer and the way this fertilizer is used, if you go up to any of your items, any of your little plants right here and you hit inspect after collecting it, you can add a fertilizer, which does increase the yield by one. Now guys, the same kind of thing goes when it comes to getting your potion station. Now I did hold off for a little while, but I will say that having these three stack potion tables is the best thing that I could have ever, ever asked for. So having a three stack potion table guys is gonna give you three slots, obviously in order to make your potions. Now it's not like the herbal area where you need to have large, medium, or small. All potions can be made on these tables. So if you are shopping for blueprints, I do highly suggest that you get the one with the three stack and you could place them back to back and boom, you have a spot for six potions. But yeah, so make sure you guys prioritize the three stack table, the material refinery stations, and the bigger ones for the pots, such as the medium and such as the large. Guys, I hope these tips and tricks actually helped you guys out getting started in this game. This game is a blast. I've had an amazing time playing this game so far, and I hope these give you a nice little boost so you can continue in becoming the best wizard or witch that Hogwarts has ever seen. If you guys like this video, please be sure to leave a like down below and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. If not, it's all good. We love y'all anyway. Thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you on the next video. Peace.